Great. So we're going to uh, introduce our participants. We have Randy King. She's a talent manager for Metal Toad, and she has a lot of experience in hiring uh, developers and technology employees. We have Mike Lamb. He's uh, with us from Pfizer. He's a marketing technology director there. And we have Chris Bloom, a senior developer from Phase 2. And all of this is uh, organized and led by our CTO, Josh Mitchell. Uh, and uh, these are really great panelists. So you guys are in for a treat. Yeah, let's dive into this. Uh, it, for those of you who don't know, we did this two hours ago. So you're getting the practiced version. We're all going to be much more polished. Um, and I assume we'll all have twice as many witty jokes because those of us on the West Coast are fully awake now. Um, the mic may be beginning to fade because he's joining us from Wales. So, you know, we'll have to play that by ear. Uh, let's start with uh, some data. Um, we did a survey in July of last year. It was really aimed at uh, Drupal hiring and how that works in the community. We saw in that survey that 82% of hiring managers survey plan to hire Drupal talent within the next six months, and 40% of those hiring managers say they're in just this constant hiring Drupal talent mode. And so I'm going to I'm gonna throw this out to the panelists. Is this your experience? Is this what you're... Um, I've seen definitely on, on both. So um, so planning to, planning to hire talent, and this has been continuous for us for a little while now. I think it's been continuous for us and a lot of the Drupal shops we work work with as we've seen just massive growth with, uh, with Drupal and deployments of Drupal over the last couple of years. We mentioned I mentioned this last time that phase two has been going through some pretty tremendous growth in the last year, especially in Portland with our new office. And I would definitely put us in the constant hiring mode. We kind of always have job listings up on our site. Um, yeah, we're always looking for really good people. And I would say we are in this we're pretty much in the same boat. I think ours has kind of come in waves. We um, doubled our number of employees last year, um, and that actually has happened for the last three consecutive years. Um, so we're at 47 people right now with 20 to 25, or excuse me, 25 to 30 of those are developers, and we're continuing to fill our pipeline with Drupal developers. Well, um, let's let's look at some more of those stats. So, uh, you know, 92% of the hiring managers that were surveyed said there's not enough Drupal talent. So, what is what has been your experience so far? I know for me that this uh, this past year hiring up a Drupal team. Um, I was able to find a great team, but it, it definitely took longer um, in some cases. Um, so what, what, what are the experiences you guys are seeing? Um, at Metal Toad, I would say that we, it's, it's definitely challenging to find great Drupal talent. Um, I think I mentioned this last time as well, that our president, Joaquin Lippincott, has been in communication with several of the code schools in Portland um, in terms of getting a Drupal, a, a dedicated Drupal curriculum up and running in order to develop more Drupal talent from within. Um, but other than that, yes, I mean, it, it's, it's definitely um, challenging. And like you said, we've been able to do it, but it's, it's, taken, it's taken some hard work. Yeah, earlier today, uh, Randy, you were talking about uh, it takes you roughly 30 days from the point of posting to the point of hiring. Um, and, and would you say, uh, you know, Mike, uh, Chris, would you guys say that's pretty typical for you? Is that 30-day mark something to shoot for? I know for myself it was a little bit longer than that, uh, but we didn't have a, a dedicated. Uh, yeah, I thought I thought that was really impressive. So I thought that was that was really fast. So I think the interview process can take not not the whole period, but but can take a decent chunk of time. But then I guess it also very much depends on the, the market you're working in. So in, in the U.S., I think it's it's common for it to be. It's faster, whereas maybe in Europe and in some other regions, the the notice periods people have with their employees are typically a lot longer. So it can mm -hmm. it can be a many month process to uh, to recruit somebody and have them have them transition into role as well. What's a typical yeah. notice period uh, period in in the UK as as a comparison point? Because I know there there's kind of like that two week minimum, but a lot of uh, developers, especially if they're in the middle of a project, want to get that project done. So they might flex a little bit of time there, but what does it tend to be in the UK? So it's typically a minimum of 30 days, but more often than not, especially in senior roles, it's closest to 90 days. 
that's a, that's I've seen amazing. that several times in, in senior roles, right? So, yeah, when it's uh, when it's 90 days. I mean, that, that's when it's uh, it, it can take a very long time um, to to transition someone um, with that kind of notice period. Yeah, at, at phase you. at phase two, we uh, we have a lot of rounds of interviews. We have a multiple multiple rounds, so um, our our process tends to be longer, um, but we do put folks through kind of more early screening and then more rounds of like technical challenges and things like that. So it is longer for us too. Interesting. Yeah, I, I can definitely uh, attest that both um, both hiring for the association, where I'd say it probably took us about 45 days on average, um, but also um, having hired in places like higher education and government where maybe those processes took a little bit longer I had government hires that took 90 days from the point of posting to the end just because of the, um, the hiring requirements. It made it a real challenge. Uh, the, the interview process had to include technical tests and the technical tests had to be graded and then you'd go through another uh, couple rounds and then every interview had to have like this, this cheat sheet that you had to check off all the boxes. So it definitely, it we lost a few people over the course of the, the, the length of uh, the hiring process. So when I hear about those really quick hiring processes, I'm impressed with that because it tends to mean that you you capture the talent, you don't lose them to uh, another opportunity. Well, what's interesting about um, the hiring process, and I think I, I, I don't know if it's necessarily unique to us, but the Drupal specifics actually don't come in till later, right? Um, the early the early rounds are more about fit and culture and and you know uh, just development thinking, that kind of a thing. And the Drupal part kind of comes in, like once we establish the base, right, then we can get into kind of the nitty gritty about, about Drupal and about the stack. Definitely. Let's, uh, let's switch over to the next slide. I'm going to go ahead and kick off one of the polls. Lauren, are you able to uh, open that poll? Sure. Uh, so, what are where are the best places to advertise? Um, where do you advertise? You can choose as many as you like from the uh, the poll options. Um, while while we're you know waiting for the the folks who are listening in to uh, respond to that, um, what are, where are the best places that you guys have seen that developers are looking, and uh, what has given you the best value whenever you've posted things? Well, I mentioned this earlier this morning, but uh, Stack Overflow. And I sing their phrases. Um, I actually wrote a blog about my experience using Stack Overflow Careers 2.0. Um, it has been a really great spot because I feel like it's still pretty untapped by recruiters. Um, and they've uh, done a good job of setting up parameters and um, made it safe for the developers to respond to recruiters, you know, kind of in their own time and, and if, it, if they're actually interested. And, um, you're limited in terms of how many people you can reach out to as a recruiter. Um, and I think I said earlier, it shows their, their projects, so you're able to have somebody that's, you know, super technical or who's some, one of your expert Drupal um, developers on staff look at some of their work and, and they can tell you right away if this person's going to be um, a good fit in terms of technical ability. We, uh, we do a lot of on-site event recruiting, so a lot of the Drupal cons, um, like uh, job fairs, a lot of like in-person sort of event stuff. Uh, for instance, we have someone who's uh, flying out here to Portland and going to check out uh, the PSU job fair for, for new students or recently graduated students. We put a lot of like a lot of effort into the face-to-face -face early on. Um, online channels, we, we've actually gotten great traction on Twitter. Um, you know, LinkedIn's kind of there. It's always a thing, right? Everyone's got a LinkedIn. But there's something about Twitter that's been pretty good for us as well online. But it's still mostly in-person referrals, um, very you know boots on the ground kind of kind of recruiting. Excellent. For so, us, it's, uh, LinkedIn's been pretty successful. So so LinkedIn for having like our own networks, etc. But then uh, Drupal. So it's listed here as Drupal Jobs. Um, so we're excited about Drupal, Drupal Jobs because before we've been participating in groups and these kind of things, but Obviously, jobs is one focused area that we can uh, we can go to, and certainly partners that we're working with are, are using that already. 
<clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I'm seeing a huge list of others. So if you uh, marked other and you're on the call right now, um, if you could drop into the questions. Um, I know it's not really a question, but go ahead and drop in. What are the, some of the other places that you're using? Because we're, we're definitely interested in collecting that and uh, finding out where those other places would be. Okay, um, Lauren, I think you're going to need to close the poll and it should release and come back to my screen. There and we it go. Worked. We had a little bit of te technical difficulty this morning as we were trying to figure this out, uh, but that, that definitely worked a, a little bit better this time around. So, um, what are some of the keys that you guys emphasize in your advertising? You know, I. I Something I've seen having launched Drupal Jobs, um, we've seen a lot of great posts and we've seen a lot of very poorly written posts. So bad, in fact, that we've we've thought about making that part a feature to offer as as someone to help rewrite um, job posts so that they're going to have a better uh, conversion rate. Um, what what are, what are the experiences that you have seen? What are the things that you emphasize that give you the best return? Uh, when you're posting a job post on one of those services? We've, we've included um, a developer bill of rights, <laughs> and that was written by um, our vice president of growth. Um, I believe Tony Rasmussen wrote that, and it's, it really emphasizes the basically just making sure that developers know that they're going to be taken care of if they come to Metal Toad that there's um, R&D time, that they have a right to um, a, a basically work-life balance. They have a right. Actually, you should take a look at it. I don't have it memorized. So there's 10, 10 rights on this Bill of Rights, and it states clearly that if you come to Metal Toad and you're a developer, you're going to be doing what you love to do, and basically the entire support team is there to make sure that there, all the blockers are removed from you being able to do what you're good at. Yeah, we we also we put a, a big um, a big focus on culture when we're um, when we're talking about phase two, the company. Um, we've got you know we've got these seven values that we stick by as a company. They're up on our site, um, and one of them is you know one of the really big ones is fun, right? Is a work environment that's enjoyable, people that are enjoyable. Um, yeah, we've kind of we've. We try to word that way to really get that point across about who we are at our different offices and what they can expect to find here. That's yeah, a similar thing for us, and it's 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 both culture and then also depending on the role, try and give them as much of a flavor as possible. The type of challenges that they'll be solving. There's certainly some unique challenges from from larger platforms that we can we can talk to talk to, but try and. Uh, rather than like just list out a job description, try and share as much of much as we can about what what we're about, um, what the, what it really is to like to come and work in a team like this, um, as much as we can in 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 a job post. You know, when we when we're talking, we've got like you know 140 characters to kind of describe a company. It's tough, right? It's really tough to get that point across. Um, so we do this thing where you know we just we just grab seven words. Um, about phase two that we use kind of everywhere and those are dedicated, collaborative, smart, authentic, adaptable, fun. Like if that's the job post, you know, if that's Twitter, if that's LinkedIn, it's just, it's a good byline um, to really get a point across really quickly and I think that helps. I think that really helps. That's nice. Uh, it's kind of like your value statement and then you're applying it to your, your hiring process. Yeah, exactly. Excellent. I'm going to go ahead and jump to um, the next poll, which is really, you know, what's working for you? So how do you actually hire folks? And uh, Lauren, if you want to go ahead and open up that poll. Um, while people are voting on that, uh, what are you guys seeing is the, the most effective for you? Is it word of mouth? Is it employee referrals? Um, how are you having the most success whenever you put things out there? So for Metal Toad, um I think I mentioned earlier, employee referrals are huge for us. Um, word of mouth is, is definitely working for us. Um, we have uh, our director of development runs a Saturday morning meetup and encourages all kinds of people to attend, people who are wanting to become developers. So maybe they're attending a code school right now. 
people who are already developers, maybe they're intermediate level, staff level, um, senior level developers. We even have some project managers that attend our um, Saturday morning meetup. And Dan is really, really passionate about teaching and making a difference with people. And I think that that just goes to kind of show the culture of Metal Toad and the respect. And like like Chris said, we our value statement is really important. Um, respect, curiosity, um, helping people, all of those things, um, making making uh, being a contribution. So being creating value is very very important. It's one of our values, um, and all of that helps in recruiting and being able to attract that kind of talent. Yeah, to to tie into the the referral thing, uh, that is just, I mean. You know, having someone that you've worked next to for a long time, you've been down in the trenches on some projects together, come to you and say, like, hey, um, you should really give this guy a shot or give this person a shot. It, it's it that right there, I mean, that's two rounds in an interview done. <laughs> like you just kinda like, all right, let's give you right to the right to the the other parts of the of the interview process. Like you know, nothing nothing's gonna replace a referral from somebody that you that you trust. That's a good point. Uh, being able to track right. down. And, uh, I, I and, certainly agree with what. Okay. Go ahead, Mike. That's just. That's just saying. I, I certainly agree with what's being said there. The, the, probably the leading one on this list for us is is events, specifically DrupalCons. Whether it's um, talking to people who've had a particular session around an interesting topic, or or just networking at these events. Um, that that's worked well for us. Just thinking through what was said earlier on. Maybe that's also because it's a good opportunity to. To do the first uh, the first interview or um, or screening in person as well as if you're if you're hiring a remote team then that's a little bit harder in, in the standard processes and obviously DrupalCon is uh, is a good opportunity to bring a lot of talent together so that works pretty well. What would you guys say the balance is that that you have between um, going through Drupal.org profiles and looking for people who are heavy contributors and basically going after them versus uh, people responding to the ads that you've put out there or connecting with you um, at an event. Uh, what, how much does that, that Drupal.org profile play into your hiring practices? You know, that's, that's a really tough one um, in that, you know, the, for a while, and I think it might still be around, right, we had that, like, uh, license to rock or rock score that basically... Yeah, certified like, to rock. Certified yeah. to rock, thanks, yeah. And, I, you know, that that's sort of on the same line to me as like trolling through a bunch of D.O profiles and finding someone with a lot of activity and then reaching out to them. You know, I, I think by the time someone's that deep into the Drupal world or that deep into um, contributing, it, it's almost like counterproductive to, to go kind of like pursue, like, a, you know, go reach out like that at that point. I mean, it doesn't hurt to open lines of communication and be talking, but generally by that by that point, people are pretty entrenched where they're at. They're usually pretty happy, so um, it's a it's kind of a, a unique situation there, but um, yeah, I don't, I, it's almost like the cold call, you know, of the internet recruiting at that point. It's just a little, eh. Randy, how about you? Uh, as someone who's kind of dedicated, right. to yeah, I've certainly not gone like. I'm sorry, Mike. I've cut you off twice. I think we might have a slight delay. My apologies. It's, it's we, we got, yeah. I think we've got a delay. <laughs> no worries at all. <laughs> uh, so um, this is the the extra latency across the pond. We um, so so we haven't really taken that approach of finding someone's profile on Drupal.org and then then pursuing them specifically. But we do use that to, to learn about people if it's a particular module or a particular area, and and if if we met them certainly uh, maybe try and try and start a discussion. But uh, not not really the kind of the cold calling. Oh, this person looks interesting. Let's give them a call. Um, haven't haven't taken that approach. And I will chime in and say that um, given I think given my background in recruiting, I've always been. Um, pushed to do the more of the cold call and I have no problem reaching out because I feel like if you can do it with a soft touch um, then you're likely to at least get a response and especially I know not probably I don't know if everybody on this call is from Portland people listening but I know in Portland it's definitely 
a um, relationship-based town. And if you treat people well and respect them and um, touch bases just based on, like, hey, just reaching out and, and seeing where people are, I think if you do that, you're, you're bound to cast a wider net. And I have been amazed at the places that I have found a good Drupal developer hiding. Like, I've, I just recruited somebody a few months ago who came from um, working from, for a CPA firm. And he was the one quote-unquote IT guy. That's how they viewed him. But he had managed to build an entire learning management system in Drupal. And he was severely underpaid and, and not happy. And so we scooped him right up. And I think that that's been pretty phenomenal. That's awesome. That's uh, very much looking outside of the normal places uh, to track down uh, potential Drupal talent that maybe it doesn't have the yeah. same same exposure as someone that's in another shop and you you hear about the work that they've been involved in. Right, and I don't think I answered your question at all, but <laughs> <laughs> it was good information, though. I <laughs> Lauren, did we uh, did we share the poll results for that last one yet? I'm wondering if uh, yeah, they're up. Yeah, we can get it. They're up. Okay, I can't see them. They didn't they didn't pop up for me this time. Okay. Uh, we had uh, advertising at 17%, word of mouth at 17%, employee referral at 50 events or meetups for 17%, and other 0%. Interesting. Okay. Well, great information. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pop over to the next slide here and see if this uh, spurs some more interesting conversation. Um, interview process. We talked a little bit about the, the interview process a little bit earlier on. Uh, what are the, the intangibles that you guys include uh, in your interview process, um, both from how do you sell your, your organization to folks, but also how do, you, um, how do you pick up on the intangibles that maybe somebody is uh, showing you in the inter interview process? We should let Mike go first. We keep cutting him off because of the delay. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. So, um, yes, yeah, so, so I think so. The interview process itself, uh, we, we, we talked about this a bit earlier on, but it kind of plays into the intangibles here as well. So we do a screening, and there's a couple of rounds after that. Um, this is why it's, it's for the intangibles. It's good when you can do it in person as well, because it's, it's much easier to have just a good discussion around the type of work you're doing, and the culture and the way in which you you, you do your work. And you just get a you just get a feeling, I'd say, from from those kind of those kind of discussions. So, as much as we can do. Um, doing it in person and, and just having a, a good discussion around what it's what it's like to work together and values and culture, etc. Um, I was saying earlier as well that this I found certainly it helps when when just when it's not practical to do an in-person interview and we're doing things remotely, just doing it over video, so so Google Hangouts or, or something similar to that has has helped me a lot in, in getting to know the person when you've uh, when you've never met them before. That's that's certainly helped with at least finding someone not just the right skills but also uh, also, the fit where they're going to going to enjoy working with the team. Yeah, I'll I'll jump in here real quick. Um, yeah, the intangibles are I, I see the intangibles as being the first couple of rounds of the interview, right? Those are the you know we can get to the nitty gritty of the technical details later, but if you know that culture, you know, if they don't click there. I mean, it's bad for them, it's bad for us. So um, that's usually something you know, we look for right away. We see if the culture is a really, really good fit. Um, and then the two things, attitude and passion, right? Um, and those, are, those can be mutually exclusive. And it's really interesting talking to folks to see you know, if they're sort of their love for development, their love for, for doing you know, all things kind of Drupal, if that comes out very early on in the process. And generally, the, the more overt it is, you know, it kind of tells you a lot about what's going on in the service. So that's that kind of intangible. They've got the passion, um, and it looks like their attitude fits right in with the companies. Um, that makes the first couple of rounds of the interview process really easy. And I totally agree with what Chris just said. Um, looking for that passion and not even having the first meeting or two be about their technical ability. Um, but really digging down into what makes them tick, um, what drives them, why, why are they passionate about Drupal, um, and also looking at uh, one of my favorite things about recruiting um, developers at all is that they are 
while they're pretty analytical and they're pretty, they can be introverted, um, they're also really creative, um, which is fantastic to be able to talk talk to anybody in the development world um, and to really tap into what they're passionate about creating, and um, and then leaving the the technical skill evaluation for later in the process. Exactly what Chris said. So speaking of technical skill evaluation, you know, we didn't really touch on this in the, the, the first uh, part of the interview or, or first part of the uh, webcast. Um, what do you guys do for technical tests? Do you have a process that you go through that vets a candidate and says, yeah, they know what they're doing um, or not? We, we um, so far, we ask for a code sample or um, any contributions that they've made uh, to be able to take a look at that. Uh, I think we're moving in, as we continue to grow, become a larger company. I think we're moving into the direction of giving some sort of um, evaluate, more formal evaluation. But for right now, it's just reviewing code. What I've uh, what I've seen, what I've experienced, and this isn't, you know, I mean, this this is probably also kind of industry standard in a way is you know providing a problem and asking um, to be walked through the solution um, you know syntax syntax is syntax when it comes to code um, so uh, you know watching someone think and seeing how they go through it is you know can be as important as you know do you know all the the real specifics of, of the language that you're writing Mike, how yeah, about I you? I certainly agree with that. I've seen, I've seen lots of like technical um, tests and things been put in place for other technologies. We we haven't necessarily done that in Drupal, so we haven't been asking for for code samples. These things certainly, when somebody has, um, we take a look at their Drupal.org account and we take a look at their GitHub account. And these things are, are useful, but normally it's a conversation, and we would uh, we would, would, would get, have a call with our technical folk and and start talking about some of the challenges, um, some issues, and talk through how how the candidate would would start troubleshooting them, et cetera, or how they would approach them. But really it's talking, just, just having the conversation and then seeing how deep they can go and see how comfortable they are as they, as, as they get deeper. Um, I think it's, we've certainly found at least so far, it's quite, it's quite, works quite well in terms of te being able to tell someone's real uh, comfort and understanding in different areas. Um, and of course, different people have wildly different experience in different areas of Drupal. Um, so so that, that works pretty well for us. I've been uh, I've been involved in a couple of interviews, and this is kind of my dirty little secret here. Um, I've been stuck on problems in my day-to-day -day work, and I'll bring those problems to the interview and say, like, how would you solve this? And what's <laughs> shocking is, like, uh, watching someone in an interview, like, totally solve my problem that I'm stuck on, and, like, I'm frantically taking notes, like, uh-huh, tell me more, yes. I would like more detail about this. I like this. I'm feeling and, uh, that, Chris. Yeah, you can, you can hire them as well, which is, you know, then you, you get the ongoing benefit from that, that they uh, they continue contributing to the solution there. Of course, they also find out that you were pawning off your work on them <laughs> the interview process. Which... <laughs> nice. Um, all right. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move a slide forward here. Uh, so... Yeah, we talked a little bit this morning about you know what are the things that job seekers are looking for and and what seems to resonate well. Uh, we talked a bit about location and compensation and giving back. Um, those are all ranked very high among job seekers for things that they say are the most important factors in deciding a good fit. So let's talk a little bit about location. Uh, we we have uh, quite the mix of location approaches. Uh, for teams here. So could you guys go through that a little bit and talk about what's uh, your pros and cons and um, how location plays into finding the right people? Let's start with Mike. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so, so yeah, just holding on for the latency over here. So, uh, so location for us, and it's different for different roles and different teams. But I would say for my core uh, core team, who, which uh, have a technical focus, I don't mind about location, and I really don't mind about location. It can be it can be anywhere anywhere in the world, and we have people 
in Australia, we have people in, in Asia, in East, all, all across Europe and all across the US. Um, so we don't mind for those, those roles. Uh, we try and get them on projects where they can work their, their normal hours or the hours that they would want to work in. And that's helped us in a couple of ways. It's helped us because, first of all, our business of, um, of the, the markets in which we're building Drupal sites, it's global. So there's always a, a project in a challenging country for, uh, for time zone if you just have a team in the US or just have a team in, in Europe. So it certainly helps from that perspective. Uh, it also helps in terms of get, getting talent. So uh, when we have somebody in a particularly remote location who has a family and they want to stay with their family, They'll be very motivated to take uh, take a role uh, where they can where they can work remotely and not have to have to travel. So there's there's certainly some pros for us in terms of getting the talent and the fact that we need people to be working in these various time zones anyway, but uh, also some some challenges to address. So we have to put a lot of focus um, around team building and these things. Try and get the team together when we can do, and we typically do this, these around Drupal cons as we can. Do some good team building and and have people learning and, and spend time with with other people in the community at the same time. Um, so certainly some things to address. Also on kind of a day-to-day -day basis, just in the way we structure our team communications with chat tools and these things that helps keep somebody who might be the only person in their country working working on the team uh, very engaged. So a deliberate focus on trying to keep these these remote workers engaged to kind of try and tackle that challenge as much as we can do. Randy, I'll, I'll, I'll switch it over to you because I know you represent the, the opposite end of the spectrum in terms of, of how you guys have approached location. So maybe you can talk about that a, a little bit again. Yeah. So our, our entire team, 100% of us, are based here in Portland and come into the office on a regular basis. We um, do have work from home days and that can be worked out between the developer or anybody and the person that they report to. Um, and it's really, really flexible in terms of working from home, but I think one of the benefits we've found of having everybody be based here in Portland is that the culture of Metal Toad is very, very strong as a result. We, we spend a lot of time together. I think I mentioned earlier, we've literally gone skydiving together. We um, go on hikes together. We, um, we actually see, I think, some of us come in, at, you know, on our Monday morning stand-ups and like, okay, well, I saw about six toads this weekend, um, all at different times. Um, so we really, we really enjoy spending time together, and I think that's a result of, of being able to collaborate directly on a regular basis. Cool, and uh, yeah, I can kind of chime in on on where phase two is at since. Since we've got the four offices, got one in New York City, got one in DC, one in San Francisco, and our, our newest one here in Portland, um, we we have about a third of our of our technical team completely remote. Um, so we've got this weird hybrid of if you're near an office, generally there's a, there's the office culture for that office, um, but if you're not, you're not. Um, so we're really flexible um, in that area. Uh, we kind of want people to work where they're most comfortable, where they they feel they're most productive and they're happiest. So um, sometimes that means like being around your team physically, being in the office here, or sometimes that means just head down with headphones on at home. So we're pretty flexible in, in that regards. Um, my personal anecdote is I worked for years uh, from home, completely remote for various other folks. and. Um, I always thought like, yeah, I'm a work from home kind of person. And then once I got into the office here for the last year, I've really started to put a lot of weight into office culture. Now that I'm here, now I can see what it does, the collaboration, the teamwork. Um, so yeah, the office, it's really grown on me, um, but we're still pretty, pretty flexible either way. Yeah, so uh, let's let's keep on this notion of what job seekers are looking for and talk a little bit about the giving back piece. now. Um, I know for myself, whenever I hire for the Drupal Association, they feel really engaged about the giving back part. I mean, that they're thrilled about the opportunity to give back at the level that we can give them um, in terms of it being 100% of their work schedule is giving back to the project. Um, what, what sort of percentages do, do you guys offer as a part of, um, of your work culture, and uh, how important would you say that you know, the employees in your organizations find that? So, so we don't do a, 
uh, percentage you can give back this percentage. Um, instead, really, what the way the way it works in practice is, we want you to build awesome stuff, and that can be anything from building a particular site to building a with a bunch of modules to building a major platform component. And we're not kind of tr we're not trying to keep that proprietary. So if you if you if your passion is building the next greatest way to do X in Drupal or, in, or building that in Drupal 8, and it's a benefit to us. Of course, we want to build you to build that. And we want you to uh, to have your job building that, and we're not. Of course, we want you to contribute that back as well. So we don't hire people in specific roles for giving back. Uh, we don't hire people and give a say you've got a fixed percentage of your time for giving back, but we contribute a huge amount just because of people are motivated to go work on solving big problems for us that will work for other people. So we we certainly have multiple people giving. Um, double-digit percentages, and, and then other people who are, uh, or I'd say everybody giving at least that, but then multiple other people 100%, and they weren't hired as uh, a community or a, a, a core contributor. They they were hired to solve a particular problem for us and of doing it in a fantastic way, and then contributing all that back as well. When yeah, I, uh, I um, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> it's like that. Uh, YouTube video about the conference call. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think our our, guy, our our ladies and gentlemen definitely are very invested in giving back. Um, in fact, we've kind of built it into our culture in that we have a junior developer program where, where we will bring in, um, you know, two or three junior developers at a time and pair them with a senior developer and um, for the duration of their time as a junior, that senior is responsible for all the code that they're committing. And um, they've got sprints that have been solely designed for our junior developer program. And at the end of the, the program, which can take anywhere from six months to 18 months, um, it, either they are completely ready to move into a staff developer role with Mildtoad, and if not, then we actually help them find a position somewhere else in the community where they want to be. So, so for us, we, um, you know, about the contrib, you know, before I started here, I always saw a lot of names on the modules that I was using and kind of showing up here at P2 and seeing like, oh my goodness, you know, these are the, those are the, the people that I'm, I'm working with have been the ones that have been you know, writing a lot of these modules and core uh, contributions. But even kind of more than that, like just sort of like the actual um, modules is, you know, phase two actually maintains and actively develops on a couple of distributions. We do open atrium and we're open public as well. So that's a really core part of our culture is the, you know, the full Drupal distribution, active development on it. Got a couple of folks in the security team as well. Like, and all those things are, you know, really important to our day jobs. But also really important to you know ensuring like that Drupal is able to to grow and, and progress as well. Awesome. And then the last uh, the last bullet point on here was, uh, or at least the last stat that we had was about compensation. And it, I remember earlier we were talking about this, and, and really compensation did not play into it as much. Um, why do you think that is? Uh, what, what is what has shifted in terms of the, the thinking among, de among developers, um, where you're seeing less concern about compensation and more about these intangibles? I know for for Metal Toad, it's it's really now, about I think culture. Outside of Drupal, it might be higher. Go ahead, Mike. Go for it. <laughs> no, 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 go for it. Go for it. <laughs> Um, so you know, it's been it's definitely culture, um, and I actually was thinking about this a little bit more in the two hours that we had between the two calls. Um, that maybe it it also is that most most of these agencies, most of these companies that that are hiring Drupal developers do pay a really a really competitive wage. So maybe maybe that's not even a consideration. Maybe they're getting the same offers from most companies. But I also think that culture plays a, a lot into this. I mean. If you've got a culture where you're going to get work-life balance, you're going to enjoy what you're doing. The project's going to be rich, and and the um, and it's going to be fun. You're going to have fun while you're doing it. Um, then then I think that compensation kind of falls to the the background, and it does not hold as much weight. 
Josh, why don't we do the last poll question? Right. I, I certainly agree with that. And I was also thinking about it between the, between, the, uh, between the two sessions. And one of the things I was thinking about is I think it's, it's different for different technologies, right? So I think it's probably you get a different answer if you're talking about um, just straight PHP development. And I think it's related to the balance of supply and demand in Drupal. So while, um, while so, um, demand is far greater than supply, people can go get, get a job with appropriate compensation. Um, so I think it's, it, it becomes much less of the debate here, specifically for Drupal. That makes sense. Uh, so it looks like uh, Lauren's going to go ahead and open up the next uh, poll question, which touches on this. It's, you know, what, what actually keeps great talent around? Um, you know, what is it the interesting work? Is it the flexibility, um, the hours and location, culture and values? Um, or is there something else? And if, if you have something else that you think is the, one of the, the key keepers of great talent, uh, what would you say that, that is? So uh, this is Chris here. Just kind of jumping in right away is I, I think like in modern tech and especially in, in, you know, kind of the hip upcoming tech scenes, like these should all be givens, right? Like these should be like that's where the tech shop should start. Right, the compens good compensation, interesting, flexible culture values, um, and to kind of like put a layer on top of that is, can you offer growth? Can you offer a career path? Um, can you offer, um, you know, actual progression technically, or maybe someone wants to move into more managerial roles? Being able to lay that out for new hires and say like, here's an actual path you can follow. Here's different areas that you can engage in. Um, you know, here's a five-year plan. You know, and being able to see a future on the first day that you start. That's really important for, for new hires. I'm giving a little pause there. Um, Mike, how about you? Or what, what are the intangibles that keep your talent once you've, you've hired them on? I, I, now seeing the poll results, I'd certainly agree with that. Interesting work, right? Keeping people engaged. I'd agree that that, uh, that each of these uh, can really be be expected, but at least I see in my team is the thing I, I focus on to try and keep them as engaged as they can do is is interesting work and um, and allow them to focus on that work as much as they possibly can. So so building something, doing what they came to do, develop something, and make, make sure it's something that they can they find interesting. Whether it's just interesting because of they can contribute it back and it will solve other people's problems as well, or it's, it's a really challenging thing for them to do, uh, or various other reasons why, why they might find it interesting. Mike, you mentioned last time about letting your developers develop as one of the key points. Right. I thought that was... I was, that was actually so awesome, I told someone about it <laughs> um, after the call. Can you expand on that? Yeah, sure. So it, it came from one of my team members, and um, he's, he's a developer, and he actually managed the development team as well. And he he asked whether they could move into a schedule, because we'll, we'll, we all work remotely. Uh, there's lots of IM, lots of meetings, et cetera, uh, teleconferences and these things. He asked whether he could put a schedule in place that involved um, doing a stand-up in the morning, but then doing four or five hours of just focused, uninterrupted development before doing meetings later on in the day. And, of course, I agreed, but um, the outcome from that was absolutely fantastic. And the motivation in the team, they, they can spend several hours a day just completely focused on building something, which is what they came here to do, right? That's, that's what they wanted to do. They wanted to develop. But I, I, it seems so obvious, but then looking across other teams, you have technical people who are, who are very talented technical people and are therefore constantly being interrupted for help. And they, they just can't, they can't focus on what they're doing. I think there's a couple of funny XKCD comic, comics on this, right? When someone's hacking away, um, getting into detail of what they're doing, someone asks them a question, then boom, it's just completely gone. <laughs> it, just, it takes them a long time to get back into that, that, that moment again. Um, so yeah, uninterrupted development, that's worked really well for us. Randy, how about you? Do you have uh, any intangibles that uh, you really focus on that uh, keeps the, the best talent um, in-house and keeps them around? So I'm thinking about it, and I, I know we have interesting work, and I know that we have flexible work schedules, but I keep coming back to the fact that we really like each other um, and I know that, you know, if, you know, I'm sure you've heard the whole people don't leave jobs, they leave their manager, right? Um, 
they don't leave a company, they leave their manager. And I, I really believe so strongly in the, we've been able to hire people who, who truly fit the culture that we're looking to have, who uphold the values that are important to Metal Toad, and that, that is the respect, that is the being helpful, and that is being uh, a contribution um, and being curious. You know, seeking knowledge, sharing knowledge, and all of that happens across the board. And, I mean, anybody who spent any time at Metal Toad will tell you, I mean, our, our, our folks are pretty dynamic and um, pretty awesome to be around. Excellent. You know, I, I, kind of an interesting question because uh, you you talked about you know people don't they don't leave a, a place of employment they leave their supervisor or they leave their manager. Um, what sort of um, turnover uh, expectations do you have? Because I, I, I'm not going to ask anybody for their their exact numbers, but what's what's healthy turnover of talent and and what should you be be looking for? I know that uh, for myself, I'm always looking for what's the tour of duty. Um, that keeps you engaged at, and not to get too military about it, but what, what is that, that goal that you have that you want to accomplish while you're here with, uh, uh, with the team? And having the, the team really stay focused um, on their, their goals and their, their, the great work that they're doing, but, but having that kind of goal that then they can reevaluate and say, is this still the right place whenever they've, they've reached that goal? Do you, do you do something similar within your organizations, and and what is the what is the ideal keep, if you will? I think um, the tour of duty uh, <laughs> that we're seeing, and I and this is kind of um from what I have learned, especially through some seminars that I've gone to, it's kind of generational, right? So the generation, the baby boomers, they they would stay in a job for thirty seven years. I think that was the average amount of time. Uh, and whereas the Gen X is more of like um, you know, average of seven years. And then the millennials, the, the longest you can hope to keep a millennial in one position is three years. And then you add technology into the mix, and I think it sometimes can be even shorter. And not to mention the millennial will not only be, have their, the work that they do that pays the bills, but they'll have an app that they're working on on the side, and they'll have some great ideas that they really want to bring into um, reality. Uh, so I think turnover, while I think it's very healthy because it brings a new perspective to the team, um, I think we our goals are somewhere around, you know, max of like 20%, 25%, and, and we are nowhere near that over the last year. Um, so, so, yeah. It's, it's hard to track turnover, too, whenever you're in, like, constant growth mode. So, I, I not necessarily like a um, it's definitely a goals thing, right? Um, Mike, uh, yeah. Chris, either of you have any thoughts on that? I'm going to let Mike go, just so the timing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Um, yeah, so I, I was just thinking this through, actually, because it's not something I've, I've, I've focused on a huge amount. It's, it's, I would say it is really low for us, um, and I was just trying to think through why that might be. So, so. Personally, while I'm not in the same role, I've worked at Pfizer for 11 years. There are people on my team who have worked for Pfizer for a lot longer than that. Um, and then, if I if I'm trying to think of people who have who have left, it's it's really always due to to growth opportunities in other technologies or outside the industry. Um, the only areas I would say we would have um, higher turnover are in areas like contract staff, and I think that's that's also because of its. It, it, the environment people are often working in there, or the way they're working, is is tailored to shorter contracts, so they're more likely to hop from one place to another quite quickly, and then establish very quickly whether this is a this is the right place for them. So a, a higher or some turnover there in in contract staff, but in terms of like uh, employees who we spend a lot of time um, recruiting, etc., it's it's really very very low. Yeah, the uh, our our experiences. We've got a lot of a lot of people with five plus years in the company at at phase two, um, and you know we've been growing a lot, so the turnover is hard to track, but it's pretty low for us. Um, got a lot of kind of older veterans. Um, and one of the things that we do to really to sort of like keep um, talent is like the reality of development is that there's good projects and there's rough projects, and it's just the way it's always going to be. Um, so we try really hard to cycle people to ensure that if they did, if they were on 
a tougher project that the next thing that can cycle on to, it's very much taken into account, you know, what their prior experience was, just to really let them, um, you know, give them a chance to kind of unwind a bit. So it's kind of like really taking into account, um, you know, your employees, uh, you know, happiness and their experience in their work. Also, we have a really um, focused staff management um, structure. Every single person has a one-on-one -on -one every week with a staff manager. Um, and it's not just like one staff manager for everybody. Um, it's really, really um, spread out throughout the company. So everyone's very one-on-one -on -one engaged to track long-term career goals, to set those goals, and to actually go meet them and to lay out a plan to go meet them. So like that cultivation and that one-on-one -on -one thing is really, really important to us as well. Excellent. That's that's awesome to hear the uh, kind of built-in growth measurement, um, you know, the constant check-ins. Um, I know for myself, I completely value that sort of approach and even the way the team is structured. Uh, we have constant check-ins with the entire team, so the idea is you, you keep from having someone who becomes a um, the, the squeaky wheel because, you know, the rust of, of kind of an oppressive project or, or, or you know, right. really tough problem that's really drained them. Uh, they get an opportunity to, to cycle back in with the rest of the team and um, feel that connection with the team. So I, I, we're right here at the, uh, the edge of our time, and so I want to throw out a, a huge, huge thank you. Mike, Chris, Randy, uh, I so appreciate you guys doing this twice today for us to hit all the time zones. Um, and we're going to be uh, providing this online as well. Uh, for folks to come back and, and listen and watch uh, at a, a future date. We'll kind of edit together the uh, the two versions that we have. And uh, I, once again, just thank you so much uh, for your time and for this contribution that you've given to the Drupal project. We really appreciate it. Thanks for inviting me. Um,